good evening everyone i hope you're you're all doing great so students as you can see on the screen we're going to do this poem today i think this poem is not done so we'll be doing this poem today vocation also you will message me on the adhyayan tutorials profile okay you will message me on the adhyayan tutorials profile now before we start i want you all to write the meaning of the word vocation please write the meaning of the word vocation all right an occupation for which a person is suited an occupation an occupation for which a person is suited yes it's called an occupation vocation is an occupation okay so now students as children we are always inclined towards a lot of occupations kyunki hum chote hote hain humko lagta hai ki yaar humko har ek occupation bahut zyada incline karta hai apni taraf hum incline hote hain unke taraf hum attracted hote hain fascinated hote hain hum intrigued ho jate hain so as children we always get intrigued and fascinated by people performing different occupations okay and uh, that's what the poem is about this poem is about uh, different occupations that the poet comes across the poet is a little child and uh, the poet wants to be all the all the people or all the professions that he sees for example i'll just share a little real incident with you so this was very strange because when i was a kid i would always want to be what i would see so for example if i would go into a public transport bus so i would observe the bus conductor i would see that the bus conductor has two bags with him one bag has a lot of money the money that he collects from people and uh, the other little pouch has had tickets in those days so i would come back home i would choose two small purses of my mother i would hang them around and i would tell my parents that i want to be a bus conductor then one day i remember i was home i was at home and uh, my mother had given the flour mill uh, owner some wheat to grind it and make some wheat flour out of it so the man came home to deliver the flour the wheat flour and uh, my mother was in the kitchen i saw him completely drenched in the wheat flour kyunki agar aapne dekha rahega unko to wo log uh, kyunki it pura time machine ke baju mein hote hain to unke upar hi pura white aata laga hua rehta hai so i saw him and i thought okay this is very exciting so before my mother came out to take or to maybe just see the wheat flour i completely poured it on myself and told her that i want to be an atta wala i did the same when i would see any different person doing something different in life right so the poet over here is doing something similar okay so we will see the poem quickly as i've said vocation means occupation profession so when the gong sounds 10 in the in the morning and i walk to school by our lane every day i meet the hawker crying bangles crystal bangles so he says when the gong sounds 10 in the morning what is gong so the meaning is on the right hand side okay gong is a flat metal bell rung to draw people's attention so when it would be 10 in the morning when the would the, the gong would ring at 10 in the morning he said i would walk to school by a um, by a lane lane is by uh, the little street uh, near his house every day i meet the hawker you know who's a hawker right can someone tell me who's a hawker what do you mean by the word hawker a hawker is someone who sells his products on the street 
okay so it could be eateries it could be these materialistic things so he says every day i would meet a hawker and he would cry cry doesn't literally mean to cry it means he would keep shouting bangles crystal bangles so he was a bangle seller that's the first stanza which i think is very simple okay there is nothing to hurry him on there is no road he must take no place he must go to no time when he must come home so now what i understand with this little part of the stanza is that this child was actually see as children we have a lot of restrictions right we have a lot of restrictions our parents tell us do not go on that particular path you know do not cross this road uh, you have to come home on time you have to go to school on time and you know we have so many restrictions and we have so many orders to follow i remember when we used to live in our old home Uh, we used to old house uh, my mother would always tell me that you know you will not cross a particular area and if you do that i'll break your leg and give it in in your hands okay because i don't know why but maybe because she wanted me to you know stay there nearby the, our house and she did not want me to go far away uh, because you know they they kidnap children and all of that right so she always put some restrictions you have to come home on time you have to reach school on time you have to wake up on time you have to sleep on time so the poet here is a little jealous of the bangle seller saying that he has nothing to hurry up he doesn't have to hurry up now in the morning when i wake up my mother mother would say hurry up go have bath hurry up have you know brush your teeth hurry up have your breakfast hurry up your school bus is there uh, at the gate when you come back uh, from school so hurry up change your clothes you have to go to sleep have to rest hurry up wake up you have to study do your homework hurry up you have to come back from play you go to play and they would say uh, you know you have to come back within an hour or so and if you have a television cartoon you have only half an hour to watch it so you understand so many restrictions so that's what that's what he says the bangle seller doesn't have to hurry there is no road he must take so he can choose whichever road he wants to choose no place he must go to if he wants to stay at one place he can stay at one place does he doesn't need to go uh, go around the entire city no time when he must come home so he can come home whenever he wishes to and i am sure students many a times there are certain you know occasions certain moments when you all also sometimes feel i wish i was a little older than i am i wish i was a big boy or a big girl i wish i was a grown up adult raise your hands and tell me how many of you thought that at least once in your life not every time but you know sometimes when you see ke yaar bade logo ko ye fayda hai hum bachche log ka ye nuksan hai so your heart tells you yaar kaash main bhi yaar bado jaisa hi hota padhai nahi karni padti school nahi jana padta homework nahi hota lecture nahi baithne padte i see so many of you i can see right so that's what this child is trying to say I wish I were a hawker. He says, "I wish I were a hawker." Kash, my hawker, hota. Spending my day in the road, pura din raste pe ghuma. Because we kids, we love to be out, right? We don't love to be at home. On the in in the road, crying, bangles, crystal bangles. When at four in the afternoon, I come back from the school. So he says, "I wish I could be a hawker, okay, and I could stay out on the road the entire day." Now, because I'm not a bangle seller, I have to go to school, and at four. in the afternoon i have to come back home from school but i wish i were a bangle seller i hope this is very clear to us so the first vocation or occupation that the poet is talking to us about is that of a bangle seller and he is given his reasons also to be a bangle seller right all right guys i think we can go on to the next stanza now i can see through the gate that house the gardener digging the ground so he says that i can see through the gate of my house that there is a gardener who is digging the ground we all know who a gardener is right a gardener is the one who uh, who looks after the entire garden maintains the garden maintains the grasses you go to a park and you see that uh, the grasses you know uh, properly trimmed and 
uh, you know, you can walk on there. It's clean. There are beautiful flowers, there are beautiful plants and trees. Uh, so who does it? It's a gardener who does it. So the poet says, I can see through the gate, that house, the gardener digging the ground. I can see that the gardener is digging the ground. He does what he likes with his, with his spade. We all know what is a spade, right? A spade is a garden tool. You can see it here. You can see where my cursor is moving, right? Everyone, can you see this? Where my cursor is moving. Beside the tumbler, that's a spade. Okay, it's a garden tool. So the poet says that the gardener can do whatever he likes to do with his spade. So what do you think? What restriction does the child have? With this line, what restriction does the child have? What, what can you understand? What restriction does the child have? With the first line, he can do what he likes with his spade. So see, when you have an object in your hand, you cannot do whatever you wish to do with it because you have to seek for your parents' permission. You have to go and ask them. Ke knife pakadun kya, spade pakadun kya. You cannot do whatever you want with whatever you have. He soils his clothes with dust. What restriction does this line tell us that the poet has on him or her? Yes, now you see, usually children love to play in the dust, in the sand, in the mud. They love to get, you know, dirty. And then there are some uh, commercials on the televisions that say, Daag achche hain, pora por. Right? And yes, sab dekhe, bachche ko lo, bachche ko lagta hai ki orb to kya hai. Wo to fat siddhaag nikal jata. But mommy ko malum hoza bichari ko, when she's washing clothes, how difficult is it to wash those dirty clothes? So the child wants to get dirty, like the gardener, but he cannot because he'll get the scolding. But the gardener can. Nobody, nobody scolds him. Nobody takes him to task. To take someone to task is an idiom, guys. It's an idiom which means to scold and correct someone. So for example, if you get a question, uh, frame a sentence the, using the idiom to take someone to task. So you would say, uh, on scoring low marks in the exam, my mother took me to task. My teacher took me to task. Right? So nobody will take him to task if he gets baked in the sun or gets wet. So now because the gardener has to play with water as well, because he has to water the plants. So he might or she might get wet, but nobody will scold the person. Why? Because it's his occupation. Also, even if he gets baked in the sun, baked in the sun as in gets tanned in the sun. My mother had some specific timings for me to go out and play. So she would say, you cannot play in between 12 to 4. You can go to play before 12 and you can go to play after 4, 4.30. And if it's summers, so I'm sure you all know in summers, the afternoons go up till maybe 5 sometimes. It's a little sunny out there. So she would not send me. But nobody tells the gardener. I wish I were a gardener digging away at the garden with nobody to stop me from digging just as it gets dark in the evening and my mother sends me to bed. So he feels that the gardeners keep digging throughout the day till whatever time they wish to be out there in the, in the sun throughout the day they do this. And uh, yeah, that's why, that's why, they, uh, that's why, that's why the, the poet wishes to be, like, be a gardener because he will not be scolded by anybody. He will not be, uh, you know, reprimanded by anybody. He will not have to come back home in the evening on time and go to bed in, on, on time. And the mother will not instruct him, etc., etc., etc. Right? So that is what the poet is trying to say by wanting to be a gardener. So any doubts still here, anyone? If yes, you can answer. You can, you can ask me in the chat. Okay. I can see through my open window the watchman walking up and down. So he says from the window of my building, I can see that the watchman of my building is walking up and down. 
the lane is dark lane is the path the street the road is dark and lonely and the street lamp stands like a giant with one red eye in its head so one eyed giant refers to a character from greek mythology his name was homer so dc so students uh, you, uh, we have indian mythology that has uh, characters like krishna ram and hanuman and lord shiva uh, and vishnu and all of that similarly we have roman mythology and we have greek mythology in greek mythology they have a one eyed giant red eyed giant and that's what he says that the lamp the street lamp the street light stands like a giant with one red eye because maybe it's red in color in its hand in its head the watchman swings his lantern and walks with his shadow at his side and never once goes to bed in his life he never sleeps i wish i were a watchman walking the street all night chasing the shadows with my lantern chasing the shadows as in following an imaginary goal or a target okay so guys why do you think does the boy or the or the poet uh, rabindranath tagore want to be a watchman why does he want to be a watchman what freedom will he get what kind of a freedom will he get if he becomes a watchman you can answer me in the chat what do you think are the things that he can do once he becomes a watchman yeah so he doesn't have to sleep early he can enjoy the dark yes he can walk in the dark he can enjoy the dark times and he can just stay outside he doesn't have to come home and zabar the sleep right okay so students we will do another poem there but before that we will you will have to take his homework you will solve the activity 1 activity 1 simple hai kafi activity 1 activity 2 okay activity 1 and activity 2 is going to be homework for this poem no there are no archaic words omkar uh, guys we are doing another poem now okay so wait we are not done yet your homework is activity 1 and activity 2 archaic words are old english words for example the thou thoust art so you don't have such words here in case you had these words i would have told you for right, students so we will go with another poem called the worm okay we'll do another poem called the worm all right okay so guys there are so many creatures you know i'll tell you something nowadays nowadays people say that they are animal lovers let me tell you there's a difference between being an animal lover and being just a dog lover or a cat lover or a bird lover some people just love dogs and they call themselves themselves dog lovers see eating non vegetarian food is it right or wrong i don't know i would not want to comment on that because everyone has their own choices and that is absolutely fair we live in a non democratic country but you cannot be a, an animal lover when you eat an animal that's for sure that's what i can clearly tell you okay it's not at all harm Uh, or maybe wrong eating non vegetarian food but calling yourself an animal lover and eating non vegetarian food is wrong that's called hypocrisy okay so some people just love dogs and they call them themselves as as dog as animal lovers and then they would also call themselves animal lovers and then ride on a horse understand guys you you should not if you were an animal lover you would not ride the horse why because you're troubling that the animal you are troubling that animal you are troubling that creature you are troubling that dumb animal that dumb creature why so we humans ignore and neglect a lot of things around us and the worm is one such creature who is ignored the most so there is this first question worms play an a very important role in maintaining ecological balance 
they are friends of farmers guys how do you think and why do you think are worms called friends of farmers they loosen the soil yes they loosen the soil they make it fertile they help the soil mix all the possible nutrients right 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 okay so in this poem the poet is asking us to value every life value every creature's life all right everyone are we ready come on show me a lot of yeses are we ready for this poem now small short poem we'll finish it within some time all right chali so now in this poem we are going to have some archaic english words the first line says turn turn thy hasty foot aside what is the archaic word over here in the first line thy the word thy means your please write the meaning the word thy means your so the poet is asking us to to turn our hasty foot aside hasty is hurried and careless when we walk on the road maybe we are in a lot of haste in a lot of hurry we do not have time to look around we do not have time to be careful we are careless when we walk on the road so the poet is asking us to turn our thy is your turn turn your hasty foot aside apne pair ko side pe hatao nor crush the helpless worm please do not crush the helpless worm helpless worm ka matlab what do you mean by helpless helpless is poor bichara okay helpless is bolta na he is a helpless creature poor bichara us bichare worm ko crush mat karo the the frame thy scornful looks deride required a god to form the frame thy scornful looks thy is once again your thy is once again your sneha rane sneha patne thy means your to the frame your scornful looks deride scornful ka matlab filled with hate and deride matlab hatred so this could be tautology because scornful and deride mean the same so jab aap ek helpless worm ki taraf hatred se dekhte ho remember this little creature required a god to form वो आपका क्रिएशन नहीं है वो भगवान का क्रिएशन है गॉड क्रिएटेड दैट वर्म सो डू नॉट गिव दीज वर्म दिस कॉर्नफुल लुक्स फिल्ड विथ हेटरेड एंड डू नॉट एक्सप्रेस हेटरेड टुवर्ड्स देम दैट्स अ फर्स्ट एंड आर वी क्लियर विद द फर्स्ट एंड एवरीवन इफ यू हैव अ डाउट यू कैन आस्क मी सर व्हाई इज रिक्वायर्ड रिटन विथ एन अपोस्ट्रोफ just like that aap bhi likh sakte hain nishita frame over here is the worm the creature rudra koli you want to know the meaning of the word bestowed i request you to please please wait i am not yet done with the second stanza still if you wish to know it's right on your screen you can see here it's right on your screen yeah given as a gift but please wait let me reach there all right so the common lord of all that move what do you mean by all that move all that move ka matlab yes all the living things so all the living things are one common lord that is god jitne bhi living things hain un sab ka ek hi bhagwan hai common bhagwan hai from whom thy being flowed from whom thy thy your means you are being flowed thy being is your life 
योर एग्जिस्टेंस एंड रिमेम्बर ये जो आपके आप ये जिस आ, आ, इसको वर्म को आप क्रश कर रहे हो याद रखिएगा ये वही वर्म है जिसको भगवान ने बनाया है और अब ये भी याद रखेगा इसी भगवान ने आपको भी बनाया है योर एग्जिस्टेंस ओके योर एग्जिस्टेंस इज कम्प्लीटली बिकॉज ऑफ दिस वन गॉड हु क्रिएटेड यू एंड ऑल्सो दर्म एंड ऑल दर क्रीचर्स राइट सो फ्रॉम होम दाई बींग फ्लोर एज एन फ्रॉम होम यू गॉट यर ओन लाइफ ऑल राइट समोर कर आदित्य वॉट सर प्लीज प्लीज बेटा क्या प्लीज प्लीज क्या करो आपके प्लीज का क्या चाहिए आपको एक्सप्लेन द लास्ट लाइन विच लास्ट लाइन आई जस्ट सेड द कॉमन लॉर्ड दैट इज गॉड गॉड इज कॉमन of all the people that move of all the people that move as in all the living beings from whom thy being flowed god is the one because of whom your and mine existence is present on earth our life is here on earth we have got a life from god that's what the two lines mean a portion of his ba- boundless love on that poor worm bestowed bestowed means given as a gift so god has boundless love boundless love right the meaning unlimited love unlimited love boundless is unlimited unending so out of his unending and unlimited love he has for all the creatures let a portion of it portion as in let a part of it be gifted to gifted to the poor worm also us bechare worm ke liye bhi thoda pyar rehne de usko crush na kare usko dhyan de uska any doubts in the second stanza no okay the sun the moon the stars okay the sun the moon the stars he made who is he over here who is he quickly tell who is he god so the sun the moon the stars god made to all his creatures free so the sun the moon the star are free to all the creatures do you have to pay money to get sunlight do you have to pay money to get food get get moonlight do you have to pay money to watch the stars no these things were created by god for all of us each and every creature he create created right from humans to maybe the smallest microorganism every creature that he created has the right to live and spreads over o apostrophe er is over and and spreads over earth the grassy blade so he created the sun the moon and the star not just that he also gave us a grassy blade grassy blade is nothing but grass okay every single grass is called a blade of grass and he spreads over the grassy the earth the grassy blade for worms as well as the now here the means you that's once again archaic english the means you to jis tarah se unhone sun moon star banaya hai sare creatures ke liye usi tarah se भगवान ने जो ग्रास है ना ग्रास और उसके जो ब्लेड्स हैं वो भी सबके लिए बनाई हैं तो वो सब में आप इंसान भी आते हो और वर्म्स भी आते हैं तो वो ग्रास के जो ब्लेड्स हैं वो आपके लिए जितने हैं उतने वर्म्स के लिए भी हैं ओके लेट देम एंजॉय द लिटिल डे व्हाई डज ही कॉल कॉल दैट डे लिटिल डे वॉट यू मीन बाई लिटिल डे यस वेरी गुड it means their short life let them enjoy their short life now you and i we live for years and years and years we live for decades some people live for a century as well we have such long lives but these worms have short lives let them enjoy their short life don't trouble them don't kill them don't shorten their already short life their lowly bliss received lowly as in simple humble bliss as joy let them enjoy their simple pleasure that they have received from god unko jo bhagwan se jo choti si khushi mili hai jo chhota sa pleasure mila hai wo unko enjoy karne de o do not lightly take away the life that you can't not give 
कांस्ट इज वंस अगेन आर्केक इंग्लिश कांस्ट एज इन कैन नॉट आई होप यू मेड अ नोट ऑफ ऑल द आर्केक वर्ड्स ओवर योर विद द मीनिंग्स ओके मैंने आपको हर एक का मीनिंग दिया है सो डू नॉट लाइटली टेक अवे डू नॉट कैजुअली टेक अवे द लाइफ ऑफ अ क्रिएचर दैट यू कैन नॉट गिव गाइस इफ आई क्रश अ वर्म कैन आई क्रिएट अनदर वर्म डू आई हैव द पावर टू क्रिएट लाइफ i can only create another human being right a human can only create another human being but can a human being create another animal no we cannot so advika from dn nagar dao means you now means you so he says you do not have the right to take away the life of a creature that you cannot give okay are we clear with this poem everyone all right so guys your homework for this poem is going to be here read the poem activity 1 so die what is a modern word for die die is your okay being what is a modern word for being it's given your your life your existence okay then there is bestowed the meaning is given d i have told you thou can so that's our first activity okay that's it everyone so activity number 1 and 2 from the previous poem and activity number 1 from the poem number 2 okay am i clear everyone all right then thank you so much